The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Colossians 3 verse 2 Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Romans 5 verse 12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. The single sin of one man, Adam, brought death upon all of mankind. God promised Adam in Genesis 2 verse 17, In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. The principle of death was introduced into the world when Adam sinned, and it has reigned on earth ever since. Do you understand this? Every graveyard, every tombstone, is the evidence to the spread and reign of sin since the time of Adam. Now what is important to note, that the single sin of the one man Adam brought death upon all mankind and also the single act of the one Redeemer cleared away the offenses of those who accept him. Think about this verse. Colossians 3 verse 3 For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. If you understand this one verse, you won't fear death as a Christian. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Do you truly understand what this verse truly means? My life is hid in Christ, in God. Paul deals with one of the basic aspects of the Christian life. Believers are in union with Christ. We are one with Him. Union with Christ means He is the captain of our salvation. He is your advocate with the Father. To understand how important it is to have Jesus Christ as your advocate, you first need to understand Satan and what he is doing and the case he is bringing forward regarding you. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Have you ever been in court and have you ever seen a prosecuting attorney doing their job? I remember going to court and watching a prosecuting attorney present their case to the judge, jury and the audience. This prosecuting attorney pulled no punches. What he did is level best to get the defendant who was standing on trial convicted. He presented his case. Witness after witness, evidence after evidence, it was almost as if the prosecuting attorney had a personal vendetta against the defendant. And I saw something about Satan in that courtroom. I am not saying prosecuting attorneys are Satan at all. I am saying that the Bible described Satan as the accuser of the brethren who accuses the brethren day and night. He is described as that adversary and that is the nature of Satan. That is the nature of the devil, Diabolus, Diabolos, the evil one, the father of lies. From the different names of Satan, we can come to understand the very nature of Satan. He is one who seeks and destroys. He is one who torments and persecutes. The devil is one who accuses. And that is what he does to you. He points the finger and throws accusations, just like a prosecuting attorney. And all of his accusations are true. Satan is not lying. He is telling the cold hard truth about you. Yes, he is. You are a thief because you have stolen before. You are a liar because you have lied before. Satan is accusing you and stating the complete truth about you. And he is coming with receipts and evidence regarding you. On June the 29th, 1988, he committed adultery knowing full well that it was a sin. And he even went on to lie about it. He is guilty. On July the 7th, 2010, she prayed to you and promised you she will never commit that sin again. Just 10 days later, she broke her promise and committed that exact same sin again. She is guilty. She is guilty. He has fornicated. She is guilty. She divorced her husband when she had no biblical grounds for divorce. He is guilty. He lied about his whereabouts. Satan will attempt to get you convicted. However, you have a savior. 
you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. It doesn't matter how good Satan's case is. It doesn't matter how much evidence he has collected against you. You have an advocate with the Father, an advocate who knows all the correct terminology, an advocate who will stand up for you on your behalf. And do you know what a sobering thought is? The sobering thought is that your advocate, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, agrees that you are indeed guilty. And he agrees that all evidence shows and proves that you are guilty. But the Lord Jesus Christ then highlights that he satisfied the judgment. He paid the price for your sins and transgressions. And because of this very reason, as far as God is concerned, every sin you and I have ever committed, past, present and future, was dealt with on point on the cross. Salvation is not through your little list of morality or your little list of do's and don'ts. Salvation is through one man, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. For the saint in God, born again believer, your life is hid with Christ in God. And there will come a time where you take off the corruption and put on the incorruption. A time where you will say goodbye to the temporal and hello to the eternal. There will come a time when God will call you and me home and this flesh will fall back to the ground from whence it came from. But when this happens, that is not the end for a believer because your life is hid with Christ in God. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, He that believeth in me shall never die. These are the words of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He that believeth in me shall never die. Jesus does not, of course, mean that the believer will not die physically. Lazarus was dead even then, and millions of Jesus' followers have died since. But he means that he will not die in the sense in which death has eternal significance. The believer will never die, but simply make an instant transition from an old life to a new life. They stepping from one side to another, crossing a line, those that believe in Jesus Christ appear to die, but yet they live. They are not in the grave, they are forever with the Lord. Death cannot kill a believer. It can only usher them into a freer form of life. We tend to look in the mirror and think that this body is the real you, but that is not the real you at all. Your spirit is the real you. This body is dust and it will fade away. And if you look at the wrinkles on your face, the sagging of your skin, the pains and aches in your body are all signs that show that this body is fading as it is. And that this body will one day go to the grave. But this body is not your life. Your life is hid in Christ and death is something that a lot of people fear because death is something that has haunted and stalked mankind. But as a child of God, you need to know and remember that your life is hid with Christ in God. The moment you die, you will be received into the hands of the Lord, and Jesus will confess you before his Father and all the holy angels. This is a theme we see in the Bible. Jesus confessing individuals before God the Father and all the angels in heaven. This genuinely brings tears to my eyes because I don't think we have the words or even the expression to convey the emotions of how you will feel. Jesus, the advocate, confessing you to all of heaven. Matthew 10 verse 32 Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Just imagine how moved just imagine the emotion you will feel, Jesus regarding you as one of his sheep. It's also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.